My father's name uh, was Tzvi Deutsch. The Tzvi is a Hebrew name that means deer, as an animal deer. He also had a, a French name, Henri. And he was born and raised for the first 10 years of his life or so in Antwerp, Belgium. And he was raised in a very Orthodox Jewish family um, with a lot of relatives around. Um, I think his father had five brothers and his mother, many of whom lived with their families in Belgium also. And his mother, who was from Hungary, had, uh, I believe it was 13 brother, brothers and sisters. Most of those people with their families, including young children, would be murdered uh, during the Holocaust. Only a few people survived. So my father's family, at, at, the, at the beginning of the war, was making their way to the border of, along with many other refugees, of France and Spain, a border that's marked by the Pyrenees Mountains. And uh, they came to a town in southern France, and that was where the, this sort of stream of refugees was halted. Um, because of the border, and um, at a certain point they, they didn't know what they were going to do or what was going to become of them, and um, I believe that my grandfather and my father's brother um, went, heard that there was a Portuguese official who was giving out visas. Uh, I think he was actually in maybe the second floor of his house or in a private private building. And if you showed up with a piece of paper, he would stamp a visa on it. And so they went and they waited in line with many other people. And I'm not sure how many visas um, this Portuguese official, his name was Aristides de Souza Mendes, eventually gave out, I think it was several thousand at least, he and his, uh, some of his children, I think he had around 10 children, um, stayed up many hours, I think, for even for a few, a few days straight, uh, and gave these visas out. And as a result of those visas given to my family, I'm sitting here today. When I was growing up, my father, every year, the time that my father, the 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 months or the period that my father was spent traveling escaping from Belgium through France Spain to get to Portugal he would uh, tell us by us I mean my mother my brother my sister where he was all those years ago so, for example, uh, you know, let's say, I can't remember exactly what the day was, but let's say April 7th. Well, on April 7th, we were in this town. My father had an incredible memory and um, may have had something to do with actually what happened to him, that these events in particular were really seared into his memory. I, th I think one of the things that really, it was only later when I got to be an adult I understood it about my father, was that... On the one hand, you know, my father had experienced things that no person and, and, you know, for a child to experience those things especially are very traumatic. You, you leave your home, you're chased out of your home, you're in a war zone, your grandmother who's living with you, separated, you never see her again, she died during the war. Many uncles, aunts, cousins, these, this is a very, very, very close-knit family in a very close-knit community. Your parents, in his case, his parents didn't want to talk about it, so they had a different approach. But on the other hand, you survive, and you're not in a concentration camp, and you don't have to, you're not put into a ghetto, which is one of these enclosed areas that the Jews in Eastern Europe especially were forced to, to live in and were often then taken and murdered en masse. Um, and so, in one way, you can consider yourself lucky, relatively speaking, and yet you've experienced this very traumatic thing. And so I think for my father, he felt guilty. I know he felt guilty that he survived and um, felt also a responsibility to be a witness
The first thing that came into my mind is thank you. That you're there. Well, he was a person of honor and I would say he did something that is, is, is very hard to do. It seems like it's easy, but it's very hard to do. And uh, he had a, he has a good name. In this life, it's very hard to get a good name. And he has one. I guess what I'd like to say is that this is a person who did the right thing. I don't know what was going through his head. I mean, there's, there are quotes attributed to him where, you know, he was later asked, why did you do it? And he tried to explain. But at some point in all of our lives, sometimes more than, more than one point in our lives, we're faced with decisions. We're always faced with decisions about whether to do the right thing or not. But sometimes those are very difficult decisions. And I think it's really difficult to both explain why you chose to do it when you did it, when you did the right thing, even though people around you weren't, and even though you could suffer for it. But I also think it's difficult and, and impossible even to say whether you will do the right thing under those circumstances, right? Anyone who tells you that if I were there, I would have done it this way, or if this happens, I'm definitely going to act this way or not, I don't think that they, uh, they know what they're talking about. Um, which is also to say that... Uh, it's hard to reproduce people like that. Um, on the other hand, on the other hand, I do think the existence of those people and and telling the stories of those people uh, can be an inspiration and can help to bring more good in the world. So, I'll leave it at that.